This is lesson 2.8, Proving Angle Relationships. Your objectives are to write proofs involving supplementary and complementary angles and to write proofs involving congruent and right angles. The protractor postulate tells you how to measure an angle with a protractor, and your answer will be between 0 and 180 degrees. The angle addition postulate says that if two angles join together to form a bigger angle, then you add up the parts to equal the whole thing. The supplement theorem says that if two angles form a linear pair and they make that straight line, then their measures add up to 180. The complement theorem says that if you have two lines that are perpendicular and they make a right angle, then those two angle measures will add up to 90. Supplement add up to 180, complement add up to 90. So when you have angles forming, look for straight lines when they come together, you know those add up to 180. And if you have any right angles when angles come together, you know that those are going to add up to 90. Find the measure of each numbered angle and name the theorem that justifies your work. Number one, I've got angle seven and angle eight. Well look, they form a straight line when you put them together. That means they're a linear pair. And if they're a linear pair, then their measures add up to 180. And that's the supplement theorem. Now let's substitute in and solve for x, then we'll find the angle measures. When you substitute 5x plus 5 for the measure of angle 7 and x minus 5 for the measure of angle 8, combine like terms, 5x plus x is 6x, 5 minus 5 cancels out, so 6x equals 180. Divide both sides by 6, and x is 30. But don't stop there. It said, what are the angle measures? Well, for the measure of angle 7, substitute 30 in for x. And you get 155 degrees. For the measure of angle 8, substitute 30 in for x. And you get 25 degrees. And remember, this all came about because angle 7 and angle 8 form a linear pair because they make a straight line when they come together, so their measures add up to equal 180. That's the supplement theorem. Number 2. Looking for the measures of angles 5, 6, 7, and 8. Well, when these are all put together, they form a straight line. And when that happens, all of those angle measures have to add up to 180. And that's the supplement theorem. Substitute in the values for each angle. And then solve for x. When you combine like terms, you get 31x minus 6 equals 180. Then add 6 to both sides. You get 31x equals 186. Divide both sides by 31. And x is 6. Now finish the question by substituting in 6 into each of the angle measures. So for angle 5, substitute 6 for x. 5 times 6 is 30 degrees. For angle 6, Substitute 6 for x. You get 24 plus 6 is 30 degrees. For angle 7, substitute 6 for x. You get 60 degrees. And for angle 8, 12 times 6 minus 12 is 60 degrees. So all those angles together made a straight line, so their measures add up to 180. Solve for x. And then remember to substitute that value in for x into each angle measure. 
Number 3. Looking for the measures of angles 11, 12, and 13. They give you measures for angle 11 and angle 13. And notice, angle 11 and angle 13, when they come together, they form a straight line. So their measures will add up to 180 because of the supplement theorem. Substitute in their values. 11x for angle 11 and 10x plus 12 for angle 13 and now we'll solve for x. Combine like terms 11x plus 10x is 21x subtract 12 from each side and 21x equals 168 divide each side by 21 and x equals 8. Now substitute 8 in for x for each of the angle measures. Measure of angle 11 is 11 times 8, which is 88 degrees. Measure of angle 13 is 10 times 8 plus 12, which is 92 degrees. And the measure of angle 12, which they don't give us a value of, I need to look in the picture. Notice, angle 11 and angle 12 are vertical angles, which are congruent. So the measure of angle 12 is the same as the measure of angle 11. It's also 88 degrees. It all started from angle 11 and angle 13 being a linear pair. So their measures add up to 180 because of the supplement theorem. And then to finish up, angle 11 and angle 12 are vertical angles which are congruent. Just like with congruent segments, congruent angles also use the reflexive property, the symmetric property, and the transitive property. Notice these other theorems as well. Make sure you keep this list handy so that you can answer the questions. you definitely need to have these theorems committed to memory. The congruent supplements theorem says that angles supplement to the same angle or to congruent angles are congruent. Congruent complements theorem says that angles complement to the same angle or to congruent angles are congruent. The vertical angles theorem says that vertical angles are congruent. Theorem 2.9 says that perpendicular lines intersect to form four right angles. Theorem 2.10 says all right angles are congruent. 2.11 says perpendicular lines form congruent adjacent angles. Theorem 2.12 says if two angles are congruent and supplementary, then they're both right angles. And 2.13 says if two congruent angles form a linear pair, then they're right angles. Remember, the theorems with numbers, don't call them by their number. Call them by what they actually say. Look at this example. Given that angle ABC and angle CBD are complementary, and angle DBE and angle CBD form a right angle, prove that angle ABC is congruent to angle DBE. Well, you start the proof with what you're given, and the reason is given. Now, since angle DBE and angle CBD form a right angle, then they're complementary because of the complement theorem. Finally, since angle ABC is complementary to angle CBD and angle DBE is complementary to that same angle, then angle ABC has to be congruent to angle DBE. Because angles complementary to the same angle are congruent.